Welcome to episode 163 of the Twim Show. This is your Saj Islam and today I'll be going over the notable news and updates in the digital marketing space from the week of May 29 through June 2nd, 2023. Also, if you're listening, remember there was no episode 162, there was episode 161 and now this is episode 163. So what happened to episode 162? Well, it turns out I was actually out of the country for a conference where I was speaking and I thought I would be able to um, work on 162, but I just could not get the time. The internet was unstable, and also I thought, you know, I would just use the time to um, just focus on being away from the office, right? And it was a good thing as well as a bad thing. The good thing is obviously, you know, I was able to decompress, unwind, and get a lot of uh, perspective on why I do this show. At the same time, uh, what really happened is I felt a lot of disconnect in my own life in the marketing space because I did not know really what has happened and what has what the developments were during that week. And I hope you feel the same way and this is the reason why you listen to this show. Uh, if you are listening to this show for any other reason, uh, please do let me know. I'll be more curious. But for me, I do this show for myself where, you know, I just want to go ahead and um, stay up to date. Uh, I, remember, I, th I believe if I wasn't doing this uh, consistently every week, then I would probably be losing out on the you know, momentum, which is going in, checking in and kind of, you know, summarizing. So in a way, I'm through this show, I'm helping myself. And I hope you also find the value with that. Let's jump in into this week's uh, episode, which is episode 163. And with episode 163, remember, it's a small, uh, it's a very short episode, just because uh, Monday was a uh, Labor Day. Uh, so offices in the US were closed. Uh, and let's jump in. So first of all, Google Search Console Insights adds a new report called Tracking Growing Content. Uh, tracking a uh, track growing content. That's what it is. Uh, Google, so let me read what uh, what I have in my show notes. Um, Google has added uh, to track your content's growth over time. This report shows you how many impressions and clicks your content has received and how its ranking has changed. This information can help you identify your most popular content and changes to your content strategy to improve its performance. To access the new report, go to Search Console Insights page and select your growing content from the menu. The report will also show a list of your top content along with the following information for each piece of content. Impressions, um, clicks, position and growth. This is similar to, in my opinion, this is similar to what we already had in the past. Uh, it's just that they're putting it under a new label and just making it things like, yeah, like, you know, saying your con yeah, track your growing content. Now, what what I would say is obviously things are going to change as we go forward into the rest of 2023 and 2024 and beyond. Why I say that is because remember generative AI is here. It's accessing our websites. It's accessing the whole, the websites in the www space right <laughs> and we do not know how much of our content is going to actually get a human accessing it versus a generative ai model accessing it and also how do we get our um websites show up uh get crawled by generative ai because there are hundreds of billions if not trillions of websites out there so that will be very interesting to see but for now seo is still a long play SEO is still in game uh, I would say do not give up on SEO stay on it and you know keep investing with that let's uh, go to our next update which is again on Google Google has now now Google now treats dot AI domains as generic top level domains why does it matter because remember dot AI dot uh, co dot UK dot CA these are all uh, supposed to be country specific uh, domains right country code top level domains so obviously a dot AI bill up used to be uh, would signify to or to signal to Google that you know hey dot AI basically means it's a website for the country from the country of anti Gila right because that's how the um, you know dot AI was um, assigned now Google is saying uh, you know what we no longer think dot AI just means a website from Antigua. it also means uh, it's a dot AI it's a you know, artificial intelligence uh, 
based company or tech company, things like that. So this is a significant change for businesses that use .ai, right? Uh, and so because if you're in the past, if you had a .ai, you'd be like, oh shoot, my website would not get shown up because it's only kind of limited to um, the local traffic for the traffic you know, of the country Antigila, right? Uh, but you know, even though Google has kind of changed that thinking and that policy, I would say you still have to have relevant keywords through your website content, create high quality content that attract and engage your visitors, build backlinks from other high quality websites, promote your website on social media and other online channels. Those things do not go away, it's just that how Google perceives it. So Google no longer puts a .ai domain into that country Antigua. Uh, it's kind of says broad, it could mean anything. So now you need to still um, that's one less thing for you to worry about. Now just need to continue to focus on the uh, relevant keywords and content and engagement. And along, uh, along along the lines of talking about content and penalty, Google's John Mueller kind of said on, not kind of, Google John Mueller uh, said on Reddit, Reddit that Google penalizes website that uses cheap top level domains. Uh, cheap top level domains are usually cost less than ten dollars a year, and not that you know you if you pay hundred dollars a year, it's, you're going to get a better result. Google is saying uh, usually cheap top level domains are associated with spam. And how do you know? Is like you if there is a link in the show notes page. Uh, you should look at spamhaus.org. Uh, it's house as in German house, so it's, I will spell it out for you, S-P-A-M-H-A-U-S. That's the German house, uh, S-P-A-M-H-A-U-S dot O-R-G. And you can just see, you know, how different uh, domain names are associated with a different level of spam and what things are, uh, I mean, I should take it back. And not different domain names, but different uh Top level domain dot uh, xyz dot site. Uh, so there is a l layers like there is a level uh, that you know dot xyz is associated more with spam and then dot com and things like that. And that's because you know probably sajidislam.com is taken by your yours truly Sajid, right? Uh, however, sajidislam.site is not there, sajidislam.xyz not there, and someone might say, hey, let me use that. But you know Google is probably taking thinking dot xyz kind of loosely correlates with spam so google is going to also start to avoid you like that way uh, that's all it matters and that's what I, the main gist of this update was next up google has launched product studio uh, it this is basically this free tool uses generative ai to create high quality product images product studio is available to all businesses regardless of size and can create images for various purposes including product listing marketing campaigns and social media this is google throwing their hat into the generative ai market and saying you know what hey we also have a solution come um, into our world now to use product Studio, of course, you would have to upload your product image, provide details about the product, uh, such as product name, category, and color. Product Studio will then use this information to generate high quality images, including lifestyle images, product shots, and close ups. So, as you can see, Product Studio can be a valuable tool. However, right now it's in closed beta, right? Means, uh, or in a pilot phase, basically, Google is only working with select group of retailers, and I believe I know who they are. They are the top companies who spending, you know, millions of dollars with Google every year. Google likes to do with them, build case studies, and then come out and say, hey, XYZ has done this and amazing things, blah, blah, blah. Nevertheless, this is good. The other thing I noticed was uh, Product Studio can do was, you know, it can uh, take the, co it, you can point it to a landing page and it's going to take that landing page and um, create your Google search ads for you and suggest things you should put in your search ads, right? Headline, description, things like that, which is pretty good. Um, now, having said that, I will also say, you know, obviously, as you may know, or as I've shared in the past, the uh, episode show notes uh, for my Twim Show, Twim show uh, episodes are actually created using generative AI. So I have had the uh, you know privilege and the experience of creating show notes through Google's Bird as well as ChatGPT. And the quality of um, you know show notes that comes out of ChatGPT from the same prompt versus from Bard is very different, right? Night and day. Why I shared this with you is because there is a you know something you need to realize that you know maybe generative AI is not there yet, 
I wouldn't say maybe generative AI is not there yet. It's going to get there in the near future. For now, you need to be very uh, thoughtful and careful when you start using generative AI. So if you give a product page to Google or landing page to Google and it spits out some stuff, you need to read it and make sure that it is still aligned. It's not like, you know, diluting, changing the meaning and so forth. Because I've seen where, you know, Bard is going to throw back things where it's like so so confidently right obviously it's a machine uh, algorithm so it does it has to be throwing it back to you as a uh, uh, confidently but it's way off it changes the meaning of everything so be careful with that other than that product studio is a great um great uh step forward from google uh and stay tuned and as it goes to general release i will share that with you on this show now YouTube, uh, YouTube shopping and discovery ads. Uh, basically, YouTube has clarified the requirements for YouTube shopping and discovery ads. Uh, that's just basically saying, you know, how and when your uh, ads may get disapproved, uh, your product, your ads may not reach the audience it's supposed to reach. Maybe, you know, it's going to be on a limited scale, things like that. And it just goes back into the same things uh, that you should all be aware of before you uh, run any ad campaigns, the policies. Uh, other than that, if you know the policies, you know, you obviously want to stay on the right side of the policy, not the left side of the policy. Because left side would basically mean your ad will be disapproved or your ad will be rejected uh, or stop running or it will have limited um, visibility and limited reach. Now, I don't want to go through all the details of the policy because it's going to take a too long. Um, the requirements are very simple uh, from Google. It's like your product must be eligible for sale on Google. Your product must be in stock and available for purchase. Your product must product prices must be accurate and competitive. Your product descriptions must be clear and concise. Your product images must be high quality and relevant to your product. Now, you know, it doesn't might no be like hey Sajid that's very so simple that's like you know yeah I know that that's how it should be right um, unfortunately a lot of people and business owners and you know ad people do not see that sometimes they will continue to run ads and forget that they're running ads and they're driving t traffic to a page where you know they probably have something out of stock or you do yourself do not know maybe you know you're following uh, this uh, product of yours is falling in the gray areas and you're gonna run ads and you're not gonna get um, the reach that you need to reach uh, or you know it's limited campaign and then you probably have to go back and check if you're if you're are, you know if you are violating anything in the product ad policy center shopping ads policy center or not okay i know i've uh i've gone too too deep on this topic however i just wanted you to know that you know it's all it pays to be cognizant of all the policies you know, before you start running ads and if you're unsure of course work with a reputable agency and the last update for this week has been from Microsoft, which is Microsoft introduces new insights for universal event tracking, tr uh, universal event tracking tags. Now, for existing uh, existing uh, U U E T U uh, tags, it will automatically start doing it on June 29th, and you can always opt out. But what is a Microsoft advertising U E T tag? Right, it's a tag that monitors visitor activities of your website following an ad click. This tag collects relevant data, empowering you to uh, keep track of conversion objectives and create specific remarketing list for effective audience targeting. U E T tags enable the tracking of various conversion goals such as purchase, signups, downloads, and more, of course, in the Microsoft advertising space. These goals can be configured based on criteria like visitor count to a specific page, time spent on website, the number of pages browsed, and clicks on mobile apps, among others. Now, if it sounds like, Sushi, this is like tag manager combined with Google Analytics, then you are on the right track. That is what it is. Now, the newly introduced UOT insights bring several advancements designed to provide a more in-depth understanding of your user interactions on your website. These insights are integrated into a powerful dashboard that show, showcases crucial data, crucial data such as overall visits to your website and the number of pages visits each page has received, breakdown of sessions based on country of origin and device type, data on... Um, Customers who only spend a few seconds on your website, information on the duration of the visitors spent on your website. So it is Google Analytics, right? Nothing here. Additional indicators like page latencies, interactions, clicks and scrolls, purchase carts, uh, cart-specific ab ab 
abandonment uh, details uh, JavaScript browser errors are also included so as you can see it's uh, amalgamation of universal analytics or GA4 and um, tag manager so it just makes it very easy uh, gives you a lot of data now if you are not advertising on Microsoft Ads should you still use UET I think you should um, you know it's just one more data point why not uh, and then also the other good thing is that you know UAT does not do data sampling which is Google uh, Google Analytics does the free version so that's a very good part on UET so that would be a very good insight for you um, so I would I would r highly recommend you turn it on testing test it out I'm sure you can fire both of them at the same time because I do that on a couple of my website websites and I have not had any issues so far so with that folks uh, I want to say thank you for listening that's it for this week in marketing until again until next week this is your host Ajit Islam signing off bye bye